we're going to start off. Had you guys flip on your computers? Are you seeing the, um, the username, password, login screen, press control, delete, and do that? Yes. If you'll log in, if you know your username and password, use that. If you do not know your username and password, you can log on with the username NSO password. It's on the Okay, just let those kind of turn on and then we'll come back to that in a second. Okay. In your folders, how many of you guys have already been advised? How many of you guys have appointments today for advising? Awesome. On the tour, I'm going to show you exactly where that is. It should either be in the advising center or um, in the, a room in the ERC. I'll point those out to you. Just listen to that and make sure you know exactly where you're going. Okay. Let me see. How many of you guys think you might be going to Division Street? How many are going here? Division Street. Awesome. We encourage that. That'll be great. I know you had asked me about that. Um, It'll all work out. Everything will be just fine. If you're worried about, you know, your, you have your advising appointment here, but you want to go to Division Street, that's okay. If you get advised here, they, it's all the same. They can make your schedule for Division Street. And I'm not sure if that's what he was asking me earlier, but I just wanted to clarify that. So don't be alarmed if you have your advising appointment here, but you want to take your classes at Division Street. Was that your question? Yes, it was. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I, earlier, I don't think I really clarified that, no. but that's yeah, yeah, it's cool. awesome. Okay. Um, the theme for new students at Pelosi State this year is determination, participation, and graduation. Obviously, if you are determined and you participate, not just in clubs or activities, but in class, then you can graduate, which is awesome. Now, you know, you guys, graduation hopefully from UT, but Pelosi is going to give you a great start. Okay. Here are some top 10 tips as composed by new student orientation leaders in the past. Um, I kind of tweak them to, you know, fit me. But that's what you guys need to do. Tweak them to fit you and your personality. Um, we have be prepared for every class. Guys, come out of high school. You know this. Show up to class the first day. Bring a pen, bring paper, but it's more than just that. Do your homework. This you know, I don't want to insult you because you already know this, right? Right. Awesome. Um, study two to three hours for every hour of class. You guys have heard this. You have a three-hour class. How many hours are you going to study? Six, nine, whatever you need to do. Uh -huh. um, sync your planner with your syllabus. Okay, unfortunately, the, the printing company, something's happening with, the, with our planners that we're supposed to get in. Keep that pink sheet because I tell you, Pell City planners are really cool. They have every event happening on campus. It's already loaded in there. And what I want to tell you about the syllabus. Okay, does everyone know what a syllabus is? Raise your hand if you don't. Please, don't be shy. Because I talked about a syllabus for probably 10 minutes. And this girl was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what a syllabus is. And I'm like, honey, tell me. So who doesn't know? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, you're going to get a syllabus at the beginning of every class. And this is a really important piece of paper or a few pieces of paper. And why this is important, it's going to have the classroom policies, the cell phone, that teacher's cell phone policy, their computer policy, their attendance policy, which is the same college-wide. Um, you're going to be here for 75% of the class. Um, you should be here for more than 75% of your classes. That's the, that's the college-wide policy. Um, this syllabus is going to have a very important date, such as tests such as projects, you're going to need to know this. Why I think it's really important to sync this with your planner is all of those important dates from every class is going to be in one place. So if you look in two weeks and you see that you have three tests that one week, maybe you should start studying. <laughs> you don't have to, but you should. Um, also, I came to Philosophy right out of Maryville High School, and I will tell you, in high school, I had so much busy work. It was something every day. Um, you know, homework from the book, this and that and this. What's a little bit different, um, in a lot of your college classes, you will have four tests and maybe a project, and that's your grade. And that might be your thing. That might, that might work awesome for you. You might hate busy work. But the thing about that is, 
that busy work is kind of a buffer for your for your grade. You know, in, in, in high school, I, I really, you know, I would try for that B on a test. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't strive to make A's because I knew that I had that busy work, that homework that I always got 100s on as that buffer. But that doesn't happen here. So you have to take every test very seriously. And they, I'm serious, guys. Listen to me here. Every test is heavily weighted, and you have to take it very seriously. Because, you know, if you don't do well on that test, it is really hard, even if you have three more tests, to get your average back up. Um, ask for help and utilize campus resources. Okay, there are resources everywhere. She is a resource to you. Okay? Now, she might not know everything, but nobody does. Um, it is really important. Resources are everywhere. I'm a resource. She's a resource, everyone. Um, computers, I will tell you, the A to Z index on the Pellissippi homepage, pstcc.edu, the A to Z index, you can answer, you, you can just go surfing through there and find answers to many of your questions. Your professors are your resources. That's why you need to get to know your professors. Um, this this kind of comes back to relationships with me. Um, actually, another student um, leader who was actually at the beach this week, I met her because she's an elementary education major as well, and I met her, our, we met our first semesters here. We have gotten to become really good friends, but the thing is, it's great having her because at 11 o'clock when we're doing homework, when we shouldn't be doing homework, we should have already had our homework done, she's still awake, and your professors might not be. So if you have a quick question, it's really great to get to know someone, to have that number. The first day of class, just ask for someone's number because they might need your number too, just to... Um, you know, know, have, know someone in case you do have questions. Um, I just think it's awesome if you can pass a professor, you know, the semester after you've had them, two semesters after you've had them, and you, they still know your name. That means that you hopefully left a good impression on them. Hopefully they don't remember your name because they're constantly saying, be quiet, this person. Don't talk, this person. But just get to know your professors. The, the faculty and staff here at Pellissippi, they really are awesome. I've never had a professor that I just couldn't stand, which I think is pretty cool. Um, check email daily. I know you guys are going to have to be checking this email and that email. It's a little bit different for you guys. But since you are going to be taking your classes at Pellissippi, you do need to check this email daily. And that is the webmail address. And I told you guys, what that is is your username at pstcc.edu so I showed you on this little card that's your username to just get familiar with that um, much like Pellissippi or much like UT Pellissippi has um, D2L which is kind of like the equivalent of Blackboard and then my UTK I think it's what it's called it's kind of like the equivalent of my Pellissippi and you'll find that they look very similar so I don't think you'll have you know to go through a tutorial on each little thing I think you'll just kind of realize it, but keep that in mind. Um, D2L, I like to throw it in there because it is, um, it's really important, but it won't be able, you won't be able to log in until August 25th, and your teachers will touch over that. Um, it's kind of like the online component of just a class. They might post things on there, and it's really confusing. I know you guys are hearing so much, so I don't want to bombard you with this D2L talk, this blackboard, yeah, 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 yeah. So you're just going to have to, this is when you got to be proactive and get in there and figure some things out for yourself because there's not a person that can stand here and tell you everything you need, and you don't want them to do that. You're going to be bored to death anyway. Um, go to class early. Um, much like UT, parking here is kind of difficult. Um, I wouldn't say as difficult, but the thing is you have to get here early because Especially if you have a class, 1045, the 1225 classes, you know, people schedule those classes over the 8 o'clock classes. So if you get here, you know, if you have class at 8 in the morning, you, you'll probably be able to find a parking spot. However, at 1045, at 1225, it's hard. You're going to be circling in the parking lot. So get here early, too, and still that you get a parking spot because you definitely don't want to be late to class because you couldn't find a parking spot. Um, Find a study buddy. I talk about that. It's kind of just like, you know, use other people as your resources. Um, turn in all assignments on time. Duh. Um, set goals. Um, I told my dad, I said, Daddy, I want to be on the cover of this folder. 
haven't made it there yet, but I'm still working. Um, actually, it was funny. I went to school one day at the Blunt campus, and I had on a baseball hat. It was just atrocious, and I did not look my best at all. And then that so happened that that was the day that they filmed me for the commercial. <laughs> of course. So uh, I, I joke, like, that was kind of my goal, to be on a commercial or be in a folder. But in all seriousness, set academic goals. Um, you want to get higher than a 2.0 GPA your first semester, and you want to be higher than a 2.5 GPA to move on to UT. Do you not? Right. So 2.0 should not be your goal. Um, get ready for the first day early. Come to class. Bring a pencil or something to write down information. Great. Back to tips. Professor Harper. Mm -hmm. It's all you. All right. How do we get in touch with faculty? Um, on the syllabus that she talked about, there should be the email address. Anybody know what mine is? Does anybody remember? It's a little strange. Ma Harper. Ma Harper. Yeah, I just happen to have an easy one. But the truth is, if you almost all faculty check their emails quite regularly, and it's easier sometimes to ask them a question that way than it is to call. And, and I mean, you can leave a message, but they might not call you back. You could probably get an answer faster by sending an, an email. And it should be on that syllabus also where their office is and when their office hour is. And the one thing that is different here um, at Pellissippi, uh, the faculty are expected to be in their offices during office hours and work with students. Um, I am over the tutoring centers and call them the academic support centers. But, and we have some faculty that actually do their office hour up there and help students there. So. What is the syllabus? It's that thing that I hand out to students that says, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I expect you to do. And that first day of class, that's when I say the things that really pump me up, that really make me mad. And you need to listen to that as students. If I get really angry when you come in late or if somebody's giving a presentation, pay attention to that. You, you want to do what your uh, instructors want you to. Um, how do I prepare for the first day? I remember one student, she was about 50 years old. She came to class the first day, said I was ready. I had my new notebook, I had my paper and pencil, and I was ready. And every one of her classes were online. She was taking developmental classes, and everything was on the computer, and she never used a computer. <laughs> So if you're lacking in computer skills, and I don't imagine any of you are, uh, but if you are, try to go through some of those orientations online. Uh, whether to buy the book for the class on time, that, uh, that'll depend on the instructors. I like for my students to come because the first day I teach, I, take, I hit the ground running. I go through the syllabus quickly and then I start teaching. So I expect you to have that book and, and know. Um, had any of you bought, you haven't even registered for your classes yet. Most of you have. Okay. Okay. Do you remember the rotunda, the round part the, with the brick walls and whatever in the round part? The bookstore is right there. So that, that's where you can get your books. Um, what about cell phones and computers? I have it on my syllabus that if I catch, if I see a cell phone out during a test or if I hear it, during a test, it's an automatic F. And I say that on the first day, so do you see why it's necessary to be there that first day? And what I do before a test is I hold, I hold the phone up, and I make sure I've got everybody's eye, and then I turn mine off, and they know to do it too. But some teachers, it does, they don't let, you know, it doesn't matter to them. Some really don't like it when you text. I don't like it if you have earbuds in. To me, that's like you coming up to ask me a question and I go. So that's something that I don't like. Listen to what your instructors say about this policy. We don't have a policy on campus as such. So it will depend on, on the instructors. Most of them don't want you to have it out during a test. I can tell you that. What about other expectations? 
Uh, that rule that we give you to study two to three hours for every hour you're in class. Now, you may be good in um, a literature class. You may be good in physics. And you may not have to study that much. You may have to study six hours for physics for every hour that you're in class. But that is a general rule of thumb. Don't think that you can just go to class and absorb, like many of you did in high school. I taught high school for six years at Powell High School. So uh, I know, and the students that come here, it's like, ooh, I'm really going to have to study now. College is different. Yeah, it is. Um, other expectations. One of the things that I think is problematic for students, it's, it's like this double-edged sword. Technology is wonderful. And the internet's wonderful. I love it. But it's also easy to cut and paste. And we have so many students now who are getting into trouble when they're writing papers by cutting and pasting. There are so many programs now that are available to teachers that they can run it on a paper and it'll tell them, that's where this came from, that's where this came from. This. That doesn't mean you can't get the information from there, but don't just don't put it like it's yours. Everybody understand that? Okay. Because it, it honestly pains me. Uh, as I said, I, my son uh, graduated from here, and so did my daughter. And I brought my son, who's in a, a wheelchair, I brought him to college the first semester. And the next semester, I thought, I'll just take some classes. And that's how I started here. So students, I mean, this, this place has been wonderful to me, and that's why I wanted to come back here. But it pains me when students get either kicked out of school or flunked the class because of plagiarism. Uh, and so I just want to warn you about it. Some people don't, don't see that as a problem if they cut and paste, but it, it, it really can be. Uh, questions for me? I am based here on, in Hardin Valley campus. Uh, Spencer Joy works for me at, at Division Street, and I'll be there about every other week. I come to all the, I go to all the campuses and check the tutoring centers out. Yes. Uh, I was going to say, uh, could you uh, talk about the tutoring thing again? I know you're talking to with a couple people before, but I just wanted to. Um, we have a set schedule of tutoring, uh, and so let's say you need math tutoring, let's say you need trig. So you look at our schedules and you see it's Tuesdays and Thursdays at this time. But let's say that doesn't work for you. You're in class at those times. You can go to Spencer and say, is there an, a way that we can get tutoring on another day when uh, this is you know, not shown here? And uh, he can check with me and we'll, we can get it done. We, in fact, we had a, a, a young man at Division Street who needed history tutoring at a time that we were <coughs> doing it. And, we got another tutor to uh, go for a couple hours, twice a, a week, and tutored him privately. So we'll we'll do that. Don't don't just think, well, oh, there's the schedule. They don't have what I need. So. Other questions? We also have an online tutoring um, thing called Smart Thinking, oh, yeah. and some of that is uh, real time tutoring, where you can actually ask a question, the tutor will answer. Um, and you can submit a paper, and within 24 hours, they'll give you um, a return paper with corrections and stuff. Okay. Other questions? You all look like you're had about as much in from you, like that sponge that's full, right. and then liquids begin to go on through, right? <laughs> all right. Um, just to, well, I'll. Um, for this patient, you know, I'm not sure, I've not been in your position, so I don't really know how much you're going to want to participate on this campus, how much you want to participate on UT's campus, you can participate on either. I just want to tell you these options are available for you, so take them and do with them as you want. Um, join a student club. Tell us if you say it has a lot of student clubs, and um, in your folder, I think you guys have this, there should be a blue sheet. It just, um, all of our clubs are listed on here. If you want to create a club, you can do that. Um, you just have to get a faculty member to be on board with that, and that looks great on a resume. Um, Create a study group. We've talked about that. Student life recreation. Okay, these right here are. You can follow these on Twitter. I do this. It's fun. Um, 
the, re the rec center, you know, I, I want to talk to you guys about this, but like I said, I'm not sure if you're wanting to use the UT, I don't know if you want to go here, but I just want to tell you, we have a great rec center. Um, we have, I used to work up there, some kind of partial, but we have a weight room, a dance studio, racquetball court, indoor basketball court, um, three indoor tennis courts, um, fully functioning, you go in there, you can get a towel, take a shower in there, completely get ready. It's really awesome. We have a soccer field outside. It's just, it's really nice. So if that's something you guys are interested in, definitely go up there um, and check that out. Tensis, Tensis is awesome. It is a study abroad program, and I've already graduated from Pell City, but I really wish that I would have done this. Um, 100 most, like, I would say 100% of people that go get at least 40% funded through scholarships. It is a great program if you want to study abroad. And more than likely, they're going to be offering a class that you need for your degree. So definitely take advantage of this. On our tour, I will go around and I'll show you where the Texas office is. If we have time, we'll stop and let them say a few things about it. But it really is an awesome program. I've taught with that program in Segovia four years. And it's wonderful. And a lot of, I, I will never forget the young man from Clinton who was standing in a castle. And he said, he, he'd been to Nashville once, but he'd never been outside the state of Tennessee. And he said, I'm, I'm in a castle in Spain. <laughs> it does change your view of the world if you have not traveled very much. If, and like she said, if the trip costs $4,000, it's going to cost you just a little bit over two instead of four. Because we have the scholar, everybody pays the international yes. fee, um, the fee that, that you pay when you uh, come at the beginning of the semester. So everybody pays that. So there's this pool of money, and that pays a scholarship of about 40%. So it's a wonderful way. You can take a Spanish class for sure. <laughs> we have actually 16 countries that we go to. Okay, I want to tell you guys something. One third of the people last year that were, were in your position, the position you're in right now, one third of the people failed. And they had to leave you too. Why is this? I'm not sure. Maybe because they thought Pell City was going to be easy for them and they didn't really care. But that's not how it is. I'm not trying to scare you, but you know, you're at real college. This is not, a, you might hear Pell City is another version of high school, but it's not. You're in real college, and it's very serious. So I really want you guys to take this opportunity and use it to your advantage. You guys are very, very fortunate to even have this opportunity. And there are so many people that just didn't get in, period. So definitely take this seriously. Please, take it seriously. And I will say that for a lot of the students who didn't make it, it was just because they didn't come. They didn't come to class. And I know we keep saying that over and over, but if you're not there, you think, okay, this is the test is what next week I'll need to be. But every day in class, I'm telling you what you need to know for that. So we do have an attendance policy here that UT doesn't. If you miss more than 25% of the classes, you will automatically fail. But don't look at it like money in the bank. Oh, I can miss five times, so I'll just take my five times. And then you're in an out accident or something. And you call and you say, geez, I'm going to have to miss three classes. That's too bad. The professors are required to take attendance. So if you maybe think that your professor isn't taking attendance, don't worry, they are. Because it's their job and they have to do it. And they get in trouble if they don't. So you see, it's kind of like a chain. So you're going to come to class. Um, I have had a professor before that we all thought he wasn't taking attendance. And then... He was. And it was kind of like at the end of the semester, everyone was showing up at the end of the semester when they hadn't been there for like the past three weeks. Was that smart? No. I take attendance from hand in sheets, from worksheets, from tests. One of our speech teacher takes a picture of everybody every day. <laughs> so she knows who was there. <laughs> okay. Um, this right here is just a link to the student. Well, it can't open, but. I don't know what's going on. Um, but what, I, what I'm trying to tell you, basically the, the website, pstcc.edu, this is the hub for all of your questions. It is a great resource, so definitely get on there, play around with it. Like I said, I can't tell you everything. Copy that and paste it into a live. Go to the I can, Internet Explorer or Firefox. 
here. I'll just put your PowerPoint. It won't. Yeah. Now plug it in there. Okay. Well, see, like you can also go right here and then just go to Student Life Current. I'll get you there too. Um, we're going to stop by there and they're going to talk to you about some things. So I'm not going to talk about this because it gets really redundant. This happens a lot. We say like 100 things in here and then they say like the same things and then you're like, I've already heard this. Um, but I'll just go over this. I Pause is a YouTube video that the college offers and it's it's awesome. You can definitely watch that. Um, connect the pieces that it's pieces is an incentive program. They'll go over that. Your photo ID, that can be made at Student Life or the Rec Center, which I want you guys to go up to anyway. You can get your, you can get your student ID made at the Rec Center. This happens a week before classes start. It's when you can start getting them. Why do I need a student ID? Well, you need a student ID for uh, everything, honestly. Check the um, book out? You have to use your student ID to check books out. Also, you can get discounts at Firehouse Subs and a lot of other places if you have a student ID. The restaurants around here. <laughs> Definitely. Um, there. Maybe. To check a, a laptop out, any of those things, you're going to have to have that. So we will definitely go by Student Life and you can, you can see all this. Um, what I want you guys to do is real quick get on, um, get on line right here. Just open up the Pennsylvania State website. No. And then just go to webmail. You see where it is up the top. Click here, log on. Wait. And in the perfect time, here he is. Time for me. So, okay. They're saying, okay, I told them to log on. People are saying they don't know their password. So, how many people know their username and password and are able to log on to Webmail? That's awesome. If you can't, what can If you can't, raise your hand. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start on the first row. So, everybody go, is at the Webmail login prompt. The username format is your first initial, middle initial, last name. Your password is going to be your P number with a capital P. You should have these on the cards. You should have your username and your P number on the cards. Everybody should have been given them. I'm sorry? Yes, ma'am. So go ahead and try to log in with that. You did? Okay, good. Thank you, Tracy. So everybody on this row is in. And if you guys difficult. were wondering this morning, I did not get logged out of what now? It did not happen. Okay. Okay, if you guys are in, I know you're, you're working on it. If you are able to, send me an email. And my email address is hkwilson at pstcc.edu. Send me an email, same thing you want to, sign it with your name so I know that it's you. When you send an email, especially to faculty, make sure in the subject line you put something. Yes. If I get an email from crazy lady whatever uh, and nothing in the subject line, I'm probably going to delete it. I'm probably not going to open it. So at least maybe put the class Spanish whatever you're taking. That, that will be helpful. Same thing here. Put NSO. Can you help with something? Yeah, mine doesn't work. Um, who else is? We are struggling. Okay. And they don't have to put out. They do not. And you guys are. How do you walk on it can you get yes. your yeah. can you can't get in? Anyway, guys, I just wanted to say a couple of things about the, uh, the IT team here. I apologize. My name is Chris Neeson. I'm part of the IT team here at Pellissippi State. Guys, we are your nerd resources on campus. The nerdery is on the third floor in the ERC. We're stuck in there. They don't ever let us out of the cave, so I don't get a lot of sun. But give us a call anytime you have problems. 
We're super friendly, and I don't even care if you're if you're at Best Buy trying to buy a laptop, and you think the guy's giving you the you know the runaround and trying to upsell you something like that. Give us a call and be like, no, you don't need that. You're an English major. All you need is Microsoft Office. So if there's anything we can do for you, give us a call. That's what we're here for. Play with the technology on campus. The great thing about it is, is if you guys break it on campus, we have to fix it. So don't test with your own stuff. Come here on campus, break our stuff, because we'll fix it for you. Um, do any of you guys have any questions or anything like that? Don't forget, every 90 days your password has to be reset. And I know that's kind of like an arbitrary number, like I have no idea what I'm going to be doing 90 days from now. Just remember in between midterms and finals, reset your password. There's nothing worse than actually getting ready to have to sit down and you're finally committed to actually studying and then you can't get into your account. It's really frustrating. We're closed on Sundays. I know it's like Chick-fil-A. When you really, really want us, we're closed. So don't forget. Do it. Um, we're open from nine or seven thirty in the morning to nine o'clock at night. We're open on Saturdays as well. Um, so, do we need to change our new password now, or just let it go? If you're comfortable with whatever your password is now, just remember ninety days from now or something like that. And they will get a prompt within you about will, fourteen days. We've got a fourteen-day warning, that need but when you're off campus, chances are it's going to get caught by your pop-up blockers. And when you're on campus. No one ever looks at the little bottom message in the bottom right hand corner because as soon as you turn it on, people are just like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Just logging into Facebook or thinking about something else other than reading the messages that pop up. So you were not able to get into your account, you got it? Yeah, so are you showing up to That's okay. I can get it all reset for you real quick. I'll be back in a second with the people's cards that I took. I'll be back in a second with them. How many people see your cards with him? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is advice from the previous bridge students from last year. Um, I'm not going to read this word for word. I don't really like people do that anyway. Um, it, my, I guess, one. Look at this. Isn't this cool? Okay. Um, study like you're at a university because you are. That's basically what I was saying earlier. So, take it seriously. Okay, and um, on your little orange card that has my info, if you want to flip it over and write Senora Harper's info, it's right here. Also, these phone numbers right here, okay, write them down, program them in your phone later, they're important. Um, just to have right there at your fingertips, just to help this, the computer issues. Security, safety and security, they'll talk to you later. This is also really important. You never know when you might need them. They're here 24-7. Call You can call them anytime. And if for some reason you can't remember all the separate numbers, you have to know this one, 694-6400. Memorize that. You can call that number. They can connect you to wherever you need to. If you can't remember each certain specific number, like safety and security help desk, 694-6400. If anything, you know that number. Okay, now, does anyone have any questions for me? Okay, just in your spare time, before the end of the day, I want you to fill out this green sheet. This doesn't bind you to anything. It's just certain things that you might be interested in when you're here at Pellissippi State. Um, PTK, I think uh, Dr. Ashford talked about that a little bit earlier. It is a um, honor society, a community college honor society. It's great on your resume, definitely a resume builder, so that's what that is. If you have any other questions, you can ask me about this. Just by the end of the day, hand these to me. Before you leave, hand these to someone with a blue shirt on. We will all take these up for you. This is for student walking around.